Hello, everybody. Welcome to Serenity Cards and Coaching. This is my monthly free online card class, and we are going to be making these four cards today. I'm super excited to share how to make them, and then I'm also excited to share how you can get this paper for free, how you can get this kit for free, and more. And I would like to take a moment to tell you that this is an exciting time right now. It's celebration. It goes from July 31st to August 22nd. If you need this catalog, let me know. I just got more in, and it kind of showcases everything that's available. There's also a new holiday catalog that's out, and it showcases everything that's available for the holiday. But let's just take a little sneaky peek at what some things are that are in here. Well, first of all, there's this stamp set with the hippos. You guys can get this um, stamp set added to your library one of two ways. You can either purchase minimum $50 and get this stamp set free um, and some other free stuff from me when you use my host code. Or you can sign up for bingo on World Card Making Day and I will include the stamp set for free and you could pick something else out for, for your $50. There's dies that match. The dies, I should tell you, are not part of bingo, but oh my goodness, look how fun. And people have been having fun using these with penguins and with all of the different little um, critters that we have. So these are really, really useful beyond just the hippos. This paper is what we're going to use today, Rings of Love. And so you can get a full pack of it free with minimum $50 purchase. You can get um, sections of it um, with the cards free, and that's what I'm going to go over today. So, um, so if you want this catalog, there's more things in here as well, but if you want this catalog, let me know. I can get a copy to you. I can also send you the link. But today we're gonna to feature that Rings of Love designer series paper. And I checked and it's still available. And so let me show you the patterns. So um, we're gonna use this pattern. Now, of course they come in 12 by 12. Um, so here's the different patterns. And there's a little bit of, I think something for everyone, winter, spring, summer, fall. So here's these trees. We're gonna work with those today poinsettias. We're going to work with those today. These birdies on their own. Look at this cute little face of this birdie. Oh my goodness. So um, we're going to work with birdie today. And then there's some fun background paper. The houses, kind of a mandala. So there's just a little bit of autumn, a little bit of summer. This matches some product in the annual catalog, the rings um, dies and then just some background paper so you can get a full pack of that for free or you can get um, these cards and I'm going to take you through how to make these four cards today these are great sketches so this is the first card that we're going to make today and it's using that designer series paper huge credit to Dina Rico I got this from her in a swap exactly like this and I loved it so I copied it and then I made it my own for the next card. But um, part of my um, special this month is going to be the scrumptious ribbon. So have a listen for that. But anyway, I'm going to show you the dimensions for this. This would be great. Deb, we were, I mean, um, Peggy, we were talking about masculine cards. If you left the ribbon off, this would be perfect for a masculine card right here. Just maybe some different colors and some different papers. Maybe use the back, you know, the stripes. Um, instead so use something like that but this particular sketch would be great for a masculine card and super easy with a punch so I'll show us how to make this guy and then this is a similar it's the same only different so it's the same you can see all the same elements um, however with just a little bit of change of color including the very vanilla instead of the basic white you've got a nice kind of Christmassy card that you can send just very simply and then this one's my own design and oh my goodness did I have fun making up this design so and it was so like I love the trees it just looks like an endless forest and I love these birds and so I didn't even put a sentiment on it of course you could put a sentiment inside but I'm going to teach you how to make this fun fold card today and then finally this card and I got inspiration from this by Victoria Littlewood and then made it my own but just look at this would be great for um, well for Courtney Lynn who's moving into a new home or for someone who's moving or for someone who 
um, just bought a new house or is just feeling more connected with their neighbors. So we're going to go ahead and get started with card number one. I've got a PDF always. If you're on my team, you get all of my PDFs for free and I've already posted it. If you want just the PDF with exactly the measurements, I've got a couple little fixes to make. You can get those on my website, but let's go ahead and make this guy and I'll tell you the dimensions. So you're gonna start out with a crumb cake, piece of cardstock. And so that's that guy. And you're going to have a piece of petal pink and I embossed it, I dry embossed it with the time worn type embossing folder. And so just nice and full of texture. And then of course that designer series paper, Knight of Navy. I'm gonna show you a tip how to get a perfectly straight stamp. Um, and so we'll go ahead and assemble this card. So it's so hard, I, um, use, I always say this, but it's so hard using up the backs. I would love to just add this back, honestly, as the front. It would be so pretty, but we're not. We're, we can, we're gonna make a decision. We're gonna use this front. And so you just simply adhere it like that. This, by the way, is three and a half inches wide. Um, the petal pink is four and three quarter. This guy right here is three. Um, this guy right here is one and a half. And again, all that's in my PDF. We're gonna take this Knight of Navy. He's just a little half inch piece. We're gonna take this little Knight of Navy here. We're gonna cover up the seam. And I really want most of the designer series paper showing. So um, I'll show you the difference. When I did my poinsettia card, I didn't, I went a little bit too high up with that piece of cardstock and it um, covered too much of the designer series paper. But I'm gonna go ahead and just glue up the back. I love liquid glue, you guys know that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that. And then let me show you a little trick that I have for getting the sentiment straight. When you guys get a kit from me, you can get this kit one of two ways. It's um, free with minimum purchase. So use this host code, and that's a three by the way, VN33RD9K with $35.50 or $100 purchase. In addition to the fun stuff from Stampin' Up, you will get um, these four cards with all of these ingredients. And I've already punched out this punch for you. Um, so let me show you a way that you can get a straight sentiment. And the sentiments we're using today are very best occasions. I love this stamp set. I think it comes with a punch and I didn't get the matching punch with it. It's a little corner punch, it's fun too, but the font is great. You're the best ever, endlessly grateful. Um, there's birthday thinking of you, love you, mean it. Like this is warmth um, this, of family this season. So this is just a great Christmas, Christmas. This is just a great stamp set. But um, let me show you, let's say you get this punch out and you want to make sure that you get it really, really straight. Well, here's a way that you can do it. Let's say um, if I were doing this in a swap, I would do this technique too. So this is a stamp erratus and ignore the fact that mine is stained. I haven't cleaned it. That was stays on. But um, what I've done with my stamp erratus is I punched um, the same shape in the cardstock and I placed I place the punch out right there. And so now I'm gonna use my Knight of Navy ink. I'm gonna ink it up. What I love about the Stamparatus is I'm gonna get exact placement. And if for some reason it stamps too light, I can come back and I can redo it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a good press right there. And it looks perfect. And there that is. So if I was doing this in a swap, um, I and if I already punched everything out already, then I could absolutely just keep going and going and going and do that multiple, multiple times. And so I hope that little tip is useful for you. I love a stamp positioner, I just do. And then the final thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add this um, ribbon. This is a petal pink 
Hmm, I'll look at the exact name. I think it's like a soft polyester ribbon. I, I'll look at the exact name of it, but oh my gosh, it's luscious. So I'm just gonna put a little mini glue dot right there. I'm gonna pop on the bow now. When you get the kit from me, um, you're going to get a tied ribbon already. Um, but that's part of my ordering special this month. Let's say you order $50 or $100. If you order 50 or 100, oh my goodness, the bounty, you're going to get a free kit. So all these cards for free, you're going to get half a roll of this ribbon from me. And you also earn the celebration earnings. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop my endlessly grateful on there. And that's my sweet card. I can go ahead and um, put my basic white on the inside. I always like to line the inside nicely but that's my card that's it so you can do that very simply and again these dimensions um this guy was four and three quarter by three and a half this guy was one and a half by three and a half and that's just a little half inch strip by three and a half so um so there you go so that is card number one Ooh ah and thank you dina for the inspiration it's a really pretty card I love participating in swaps because I get so many ideas. So now there's just a couple little tips I'll show you with this next guy. Um, the first one being I wanted to show you the ribbon itself. So let's take a look at the ribbon itself. Here's this petal pink ribbon and what's the exact name of it? Let me have a look. The exact name of it is Petal pink soft polyester ribbon. And I'm telling you, it is so, so, so soft. It is just, it ties well. And so even though when you get the kit from me, I'm gonna tie the bow for you. I will show you if you have a bow maker, I'll just do a quick little tie of the bow. So you wrap it around, you make sure your lengths are equal. You go over like that. You come back around, you pull it forward, you take this guy and go through. I know this is going quickly. If you want this bow maker, I know who sells one. I love it. And her instructions are very, very detailed. But that's just how easy it is to do a nice bow. And again, when you get the kit from me, you get the bow inside of it. So um, I'm actually not going to go ahead and adhere all of the sentiments, but I'll, I mean, every little piece, because it's the same as the last card, the PDF gives exact step-by-step -step instructions, but I thought I would show you a couple of the differences. So this is a little different punch. This is a new punch that just came out, and the name of it is... So the other one was Label Me Lovely, and this punch is Handmade Tag. So you've got your choices. This is Label Me Lovely. It's very, very useful. And then this is, um, what did I say, Handmade Tag. So I love it. It has a matching stamp set that kind of does a nice border all the way around. But look how nicely this sentiment just fits within like that little rectangle right there. So um, may you enjoy the warmth of family. This um season this is the very best and so the only thing i would say is it's the exact same elements i had a different color cardstock i had very vanilla on the inside instead of basic white i had your same petal pink i used the poinsettia which is not going to be on the other side of the trees got your evening evergreen so it's the exact same dimensions exact same everything a little different punch and then just the ribbon right there just a little bow to cut off the little tails and then there you've got that card so super sweet you want to make it masculine maybe just leave the bow off and so um so there you go so that is card number two and now i'm going to go on to card number three which is a little more involved So card number three is a fun fold. And it really, this is like a spotlight technique. We're really spotlighting just that sweet, sweet little birdie. And there were so many I could have punched. Like this one, I like punched a couple different ones, right? So depending on um, 
I can't punch the same one for everybody. So when you get it, you'll get a little different image, but um, that's just a fun little card. And you can see that I've snipped off about a quarter inch of, an, of the edge there. So let's look how we can construct this card. So you're gonna cut your eight and a half by 11 first. I mean, eight and a half by five and a half. And then you're gonna score it um, four and a quarter. So that's gonna be like your normal, normal thing that you do. You're gonna make your card base, but then you're gonna come in. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a quarter of an inch edge. Oh, thank you, Terry. Hi, Terry, welcome, thank you. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, you, you've got this, it's your normal eight and a half by five and a half. You're just gonna pop it in. I put this on the four inch score line, uh, cut line. So I put it into my, um, I'll just show you. So when I wanted to cut off a quarter of an inch, I've got my piece and then I come over here. I'm not actually gonna do it because I've already done it on the one side, but let's say I didn't. So this is four and a quarter. Let's say I want to cut a quarter of an inch off. I'm going to um, make sure that this is open all the way. And I'm going to take the fold and put it on the four inch line. And you can see it. You can see the fold all the way down here. So you can see that you're on the four inch line. Alternatively, you can see that you're on the quarter inch line over there. You're just going to trim a quarter of an inch off. I have already done that for the front of our card here. And I've actually um also uh, where we're headed and i'll show you how you do this is you're going to make a little flap like this so you get a little tab and you get a circle and so where you're headed very first and foremost is you want to get the bones and the construction of your card together first so that's the first thing we're going to do and i'm going to take you through that step by step i've got all the ingredients here you get all this in the kit so there's my quarter of an inch cut off Here's my circle, and I've got all the dimensions in the PDF of what, I think it's a one and a half inch circle, um, I, and I've got all the dimensions there. If you happen to have circle punches, we don't have those right now, you could use those, but the layering circles dies works perfectly. Um, yeah, this circle is one and a half. So I've got my circle, and then I've got a little tab and basically I put, and I will do this for you because I, as I was, I got to re-update the PDF a little bit, but um, it's just going to be easier with the tear and tape on it. Tear and tape, by the way, is amazing. If you don't have tear and tape in your adhesive library, highly, highly recommend it. It's really helpful for situations like this where you want to have a very, very durable fold, right? So... I'm going to open my card. I want to make sure that my quarter inch is open on the front. I'm not attaching anything yet until I get this first fold on. So I'm going to go ahead and lift off my tear and tape. And I'm going to go about an inch and a half up. I know that that's like a, a very particular thing. But if you want the circle placed like right in the corner right there, that's about an inch and a half is right about right there. So you can play around with it before you actually attach it. Um, but I, and I'll update the PDF and make sure that little notes in there, but I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna just take a look on my grid paper, inch and a half is one, two, three, four. So inch and a half is about right there. And I'm gonna put this, two, three, four, I'm gonna put it just right about there. And I'm putting it, there's going to be a score line in your, um, in your little tab. So, um, and if not, I, I give you the dimensions and you just score it in half. But anyway, you're just going to go ahead and get your little tab placed there. Now go ahead and double check it and kind of just make sure you like the placement of it. You can just take a look at it visually, but that's going to be fine. So, um, so now I'm going to give a really, really good burnish right there because it is going to make its way all the way around. And then I'm going to lift up the other piece of tear and tape. And I'm going to put the circle just right over, not too far over, but I'm going to put the circle just like that. So then that's it, you guys. That's the bones of it. And so that's it. Now, it's not covered up. You can see all of that, right? So that's why we're going to decorate the inside. So I took this paper 
and I took it in about an eighth of an inch. At first I didn't, I did four and a quarter by five and a half, and then it was just too bumpy and bulky and it was too much. So I'm taking it in just a tiny little fraction of an eighth of an inch. And I'm crying as I cover up this poinsettia paper, but I'm just gonna order another pack so that I have multiple and it's gonna be okay because I love this poinsettia. But anyway, I'm gonna cover it up and I'm gonna go ahead and just place that inside. The reason I like glue is if I don't have it placed just perfectly, I can shift it a little bit. And now I've got the inside tab covered up. So there we go. And you can just see a little peek of it out to the side, right? So that's that guy. And then, um, and then I can start to cover up the birdies. So you're gonna get two birdies in yours. Again, you can earn this paper for free for yourself. And if there's different birdies you want, you can cut those out with a little circle. But this particular one has these two birdies, just sweet little faces. So I want this one on the front and this tiny little one on the inside to say hi. So I'm gonna put this one on the front. I'm just gonna use glue. And um, I did put the circles about a little quarter of an inch smaller. So there's just kind of that nice soft suede emphasis around it. So we've got our nice little bird sitting right there. Um, I kind of think this looks like the spotlight technique. I don't know if you guys know the spotlight technique. Often that's used when we're coloring and it just really pops out kind of part of the image. So this kind of reminds me of the spotlight technique. But anyway, so now I've got my little birdie. Um, so it's really starting to come together. I've got my little flap right there. And now the rest of it's pretty simple. The front of it, I use these deckled rectangles and oh my goodness, I'm, oh my goodness, I'm getting so much use out of these and I love them. So I've got my deckel and that deckel is, is the one that's about three and a quarter by four and three quarters. So that's about the size of the deckel, maybe not exactly. And then this soft suede, two and three quarter by four and a quarter. Again, all these measurements are in the PDF. You, if you're on my team, you get the PDF free. If you purchase, you get the PDF free on the kit free. Otherwise, you can buy just the PDF. But anyway, the this soft suede, two and three quarter by four and a quarter for context. So I'm going to go ahead and glue my little trees right there. I just, it, I don't know. I just love these trees. They kind of it just feels like a wintry, a peaceful wintry scene. So, and you know what? I could use some winter right now. It's so hot right here. It was a little cooler today, but it's been triple digits. So even Wrigley's too hot, our new little puppy, even Wrigley's drinking water like it's going out of style. So there we go. You guys, Wrigley had a little emergency last week. He's okay now, but we had a little emergency trip to the vet. We think he probably got into eating something. So, all right, you guys, that's it. I played with the idea of putting a sentiment right there, and I didn't even, I just, it was too busy. I just wanted just that sweet little birdie right there. You can put, I will give you this decal sheet on the inside. Um, but I think that's even too big. I'm going to give you this size. You could cut it down. I feel like even just a tiny little sentiment right there, just to kind of keep the, the, like the 3D look of the trees going. But I've already designed it and I'm already cutting it. So you're going to get that same size. Janet, deckle. could you um, slip it on the, uh, the, the other side? Oh gosh, you could just put it right there. You know what? I am going to do that. I love that idea. I may not update, that's the benefit of you guys coming here. I may not update the PDF with this, but, um, oh, that was a perfect idea, Doris. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect idea. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love it, thank you. So there you go. So it just feels like the forest goes forever and then you can put your sweet little message right there. So thank you, Doris. Alrighty, so that was card number three. And now let's get to card number four. Card number four, and I'm telling you, this paper has so much versatility. Card number four just has these beautiful homes. Um, and I already can think of two people that I'm going to send it to. And then I love this sentiment, love you, mean it. It's just a fun little sassy thing. 
Um, the person that I got inspiration from, Victoria Littlewood, I think, she had like letters up here using the alpha best and it was like, welcome to your new home. I think she had all different sizes. I don't know. But anyway, I just thought this was a sassy little like love you mean it. So that's what we're going to do today um, from the very best occasion stamp set. So um, and I very carefully like created all of these um, measurements. We're going to do it right today. I was tearing and re-tearing and taking off and taking off. So we're going to make the, the prettiest one today. This was a little bit of a practice copy kind of, but it helped me get all the measurements. And you guys, that's just how I roll. I just, uh, if it's not working, I tear it off and I um, keep doing it till I get it right. So the PDF lovingly has all of the measurements and they're all tested. So this is a like double Z fold. And so let me take you through all the pieces of it. And it's not that hard. Again, I do all the cutting and scoring for you though. I even cut all the designer series paper for this kit. So basically the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut your paper this way instead of um, the normal eight and a half, right? So you're gonna do four and a quarter by 11. You're gonna cut it, um, score it in half at five and a half and then score it in half again. So half of five and a half is two and three quarter. So that's it, super simple Simon for the front. And why is it called a Z? Well, this one kind of looks upside down, but if you look at it the other way, that would be a Z. So that's why it's as simple as it's a Z because it has a top and a diagonal and a bottom. So this is kind of a upside down Z or backwards or whatever. But anyway, that's too painful. I'm not gonna- That looks like oh. an easel card. Yeah. It does look like an easel card. You know what? I have an easel card right here, and it's exactly the same concept as an easel card. It is ex so very nice pattern recognition, Terry. Very nice pattern recognition. That's exactly, that's exactly right. So, um, so then I took, and honestly, I was, I'm not going to go rogue, but I'm so tempted to like use that side, but I'm not going to. So now we've got our little backward Z and then you're just going to take and I'm loving the idea of decorating the inside. So this is four by five and a quarter and we're going to put that on the inside. Right. So most of it will be covered up, but we're going to we're going to put it anyway. And actually, I am going to finish this one out because I am going to take pictures and update the PDF. The PDF has a couple pictures with you can't see it too closely, but it's got some of that torn view looking and I don't like that. So, um, so here we've got our four by five and a quarter that goes on the inside, simple slime end. Now we're going to take the same paper. Um, so if you're cutting it for yourself, um, pay attention to direction is my invitation, right? So I give you instructions and I say, oh, cut a four by five and a quarter. Well, you want to cut it on the sideways because this one goes on the sideways. So here, um, this is going to be four inches and four inches, right? And then if that's two and three quarter, which it is, we're just going to take that to two and a half. So I'll just glue those again, all in the PDF. Um, but we'll go ahead and get that. I always go, I usually always go a quarter inch in. Sometimes I'll do an eighth of an inch. If I think, um, I don't know, it just depends what the card is, but I like quarter of an inch, so we're gonna do that. So now we've got the base and the background for our neighborhood view. Yeah, I think Victoria's card, I think she had soft suede in the background, so she's got some differences. But anyway, so there, um, so we've got that. Now this is the front of our card, and this um, is also a Z and they're going to marry and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So um, because I wanted like that really, really long view with the houses, I wanted to get as much real estate on the front as I could. So I made that five inches, right? And then that's where I was coming in and playing and coming in and playing to get it just right to figure out like, so what's the fold going to be so that um, so that it all fits in the envelope and all goes together nicely. So, um, so I'm going to decorate this layer a little bit first, and then I'm going to adhere it. So, um, so you're going to have it 
this way. Now this is the paper. I love this paper. I didn't do anything with this guy yet. I'm just using the other side because really we want the houses to pop. So we're just kind of putting this paper right here. So this piece is I'm not on the right one. This card layer is three inches by nine inches. So three by nine. And I scored it at five and seven. So um, so that's that guy. And then of course you take everything in a quarter of an inch. So it's three inches the short way, nine inches the long way. Score it five inches. Oopsie. Hope that didn't get to you. Gluey. Score it at five inches and score it at seven inches. And then just do the DSP to fit it just right. All right, so I'm gonna get that popped down there. And again, this is just gonna be a background to those beautiful houses and some clouds. So we really are just, um, this is not the prominent, like we're gonna cover up this tree, but um, but the, the feature and this the main like focal point is going to be the neighborhood and the houses. All right, so now I've got that all like that. I could, while this is right here, stamp. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bravely come back and stamp in later. I'm not sure what sentiment I want to use yet, but if I were you, I would stamp right now and maybe use a stamp positioner. But now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get this on here and we want to make sure that it fits right. So the very first thing you want to do is just make sure like that you eyeball it and that the folds fit together. And before you glue a thing, make sure that it fits together, right? So so we've done that. Um, and now I'm actually going to glue this side first. So I'm going to come in here and it's because the surface area is a little bit um, smaller. So it's a little bit more manageable. And if I need wiggle room, um, it's just a lot more manageable. So I, I put my glue on the back. You could put tear and tape. You could put um, anything else. But if you do, you are not going to be able to get wiggle room. So this is a great time to decide to use glue. And then I'm going to come in. And this is where I'm going to place it. Now I want just a little bit. So this is five inches, I know. So I want like a little bit of a quarter inch strip on the right and a little bit of a quarter inch strip on the left showing. And so I'm going to come in a bone folder is a great idea. So just come in and really, really burnish and make sure I've just got that good and crisp. Um, but that feels good and right, right? So I know when I go to glue this other half then that it's going to work out just fine. So now I can come in. And I want to make note that glue shouldn't go any further than here. So I'm actually not even going to go that far. I'm going to go right about here like this with my glue. And you guys a really good to... point Leila, about using this, you know, um, gluing the smallest piece first because yeah, it's more thanks. manageable. It is yeah. more. Otherwise, you got it on the left and you're trying to push and this and that and whatever. So now we know that that side's really secure. We know we've got a little, little bit of wiggle room. Terry, I've made all the mistakes. <laughs> Hell <we> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that I just know this. I've made all the mistakes. All right. So now you want to come in and you want to just play with it. Now, here's something I want to invite you guys. One thing that I love to do, um, I love it when you guys get excited about this and then go make this on your own. So let's say you it's maybe too big for you to just get the PDF and do it on your own. Maybe you want to get the kit first. Well, maybe before you assemble everything, go cut and score everything on your own with another card so that you can repeat it. Um, so that's why I, 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 t I give you all the little steps. I give you, I cut, I score, I give you all the little everything. And yes, so you can sit down and do it, but also so that if you wanted to make it yourself, you very easily, well, maybe not very easily, but you very, um, you very much could. You very much could like very much follow along and compare and say, wait, did I have it cut right? And do I have it scored right? Now I sat down and 
just I fussy cut. So what does that mean? Um, I just um, like the old decoupage days. I just sat and cut a bunch of these little houses. You guys don't need to watch me do that. But just to tell you the um, designer series paper comes like this with a really big piece, right? So I just went all along the bottom. And so I think in the kit, I've decided to give you guys each a six by six piece of the houses just so that you can um, get it done. So I've already been cutting all around it, but just some cutting tips. One thing is um, I move the paper, not the scissors. So let's say I wanna keep this little bush here and I am keeping the little bush here. I'm gonna move the paper, not the scissors. And I'm leaving a white outline. I'm using our snips, which I love and they're super affordable and they're even better than like I'm telling you, they're they're better than some found on the market, right? So they're just good and crisp and sharp. Um, they're really, really quite nice. So move the paper, use really, really good snips. Um, do as I say, not as I do. You can see I've been using these with some little glue on them. I violated my own rule. These are supposed to be like the good scissors, but I violated my own rule. Anyway, I cut a bunch of houses out. I'm probably going to make this one completely different. I die cut some clouds. There are so many clouds right now. Give it a whirl has clouds. The waves have clouds. There is a punch that's clouds. The punch is a little too big, I think, for these houses. Oh my gosh, Jan was just saying she did this the other day. Did you guys ever do that with your blends? Oopsie. Don't open it so hard. <laughs> you just put it back together and pull the right thing out. So this is light, balmy blue. And honestly, I'm just coming in and giving just a little bit of accent um, on the cloud. You might like look at it and think, oh my gosh, that doesn't look like a cloud when you're looking at it. But um, when you put it on and you put the whole thing together, it's just a really nice shading and it's a really nice shadow. And it was just as simple as that. It was light balmy blue. Peggy, you were asking what are some good colors to have in your library? Balmy blue is a great color to have in your library. It's just nice and light, goes with everything. So, um, so I will tell you what I did. I put like the biggest house in the front and I put it on dimensionals and then I built around it. So, um, so that was just as simple as that. Once I put the biggest house in the front and then I put some smaller houses around it and that's it. So, um, and I glued the other houses and I put them a little bit further back. Um, I should have tested it out first, but anyway, it's fine. So um, maybe I'll put this guy over here. Anyway, you can play and arrange and get it exactly how you want, but um, I'm gonna put those a little bit further back. And then I'm gonna I put my clouds like right between the two houses, um, just so that you've got kind of the rule of five going on. Well, I, that guy's too little. What am I gonna do here? I am not gonna get this perfect, but um, I think I will probably cut these trees off and put that guy right there. So that's gonna be that guy. Again, I glued two of them and I dimensionaled one of them and then I opened it up and I continued to glue. So I'm gonna put that guy there. I'm gonna put him back a little bit. I'm gonna put a couple clouds there. And then I put a couple um, houses on the inside. No gems this time, you guys, no ribbon, no nothing, just kind of the paper doing the work this time. So just a little bit of height right there with the clouds. I'll get that other one cut up and put in. And then there's room for another house right here and room for another house right here. You can play and cut. Um, and then I'll probably put this guy here because he's smaller. You could leave blank so that you can sign it. So however you want to do it. And then this was the final version of this guy. Um, 
And so, and you know what, these two are the same. It just so happened, but you can't even really tell when you're looking at it. So um, love you mean it. Alrighty, these are our four cards. And if you're a team member, you already know how you can get this kit. If you want to earn it for free, you can purchase at leelamonkey.stampinup.net. Use this host code VN33RD9K. I really am very grateful for your purchases with my small business. I'm very, very grateful. It allows me to keep doing what I do here. And we've got our couple other cards. We've got, uh, oh, 35, 50, or 100. 50 and 100, you earn celebration. 50 and 100, you earn um, half a roll of ribbon from me. And at all three levels, you earn the kit. And before July 21st, I would say, is the ordering deadline. Here's our four cards. And uh, oh, also the PDF, if you just want the measurements, PDFs available. So you guys, thank you so much for joining today. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.